Hello and welcome to section 4, Advanced Operators, When, Where and Why. In this video we're going to talk about the bitwise operators. Some key points. So these are great for quick multiplication and division, especially by the power of 2. And it's really important for embedded applications that you want to try and save cycles or CPU cycles. We can use this for CRC, which is cyclic redundancy checking. It's really great for making sure your data is sent correctly across networks. It's also used for checking credit cards and things like that, which is handy for day to day. Um, also, people use them for mathematical calculations. You're just trying to reduce the amount of memory used here for very large numbers. Okay, so I'm not going to do much typing in this episode. I've got a lot of examples set up for each of the cases, and hopefully we can run through it together. So, if you can't remember much about binary, I'll give an example above. So the re representation is first value is equal to 1, second 2, 4, 8, and 16, and so on. So in the example below, for the binary variable, we have got 2, because as the second digit is set to 1. So you can see it on the right hand side here, there's 2. If we wanted to print out 3, it would be the sum of that. And 3 because our first value is 1 and our second value is 2. So they're added together and we get 3. Most of the examples are going to be 8 bits, so that's what I've shown you here. So first of all we have 15 in binary. Here is the representation of binary in Swift. It's an unsigned integer, so we don't have to worry about minus or plus, and there's 8 bits. The operator is this tilde, and it's a prefix operator, so you put it in front of our variable, and it should negate the values. And what does that mean? What we have here is so 15, and it has 1111 at the end, where we have 240, which has the ones at the start. The not operator negates everything, so if it is 1 before, it's now 0. So applying the not to this number 15 produces 240 with the opposite values. So we have the next example is going to be the and operator. You see that it's represented by the ampersand. We have the first six bits and the last six bits represented here. And we're going to add these together. You can see in the comment below that we're going to take 252 in binary, which is all these ones and zeros. We're going to add them to 63, which is represented up here. Okay, for today's example, we have not got any typing, everything's all set out and ready to go. As a recap on binary, each digit represents the value in this top string here. So if I pick 1, I set that digit to 1 in the first space, then 1 is set and the value is 1 itself. Puts out 1. If I pick the second value, then we get 2. And if I add 2 together, like this, then I get 3, because we get the sum of 1 and 2 together. And this carries on all the way to the left, for as long as you like. So we're using Swiss binary representation here, note it with the B. We're using unsigned integers, which is represented by U, and, are, and they are 8 bits long. So as a first example, we're going to do the NOT operator. It's represented by the tilde. So in this case, we have, I print it out for you, we have 15 represented in binary. We're going to not that. So everything that was 1 before becomes a 0. Everything that is a 0 becomes a 1, as you can see in this example below. So the result is then 240. Because so that's fairly simple, that one. It's not too bad. And the next one is going to be the AND operator. And we're going to take the first 6 bits and the last 6 bits, and if we add them together, we get 60 as the result in decimal. And how this is working is you need to have 1 and 1 together to make a result. So 0, 1 becomes 0, 0, 1 becomes 0 again. Because these two are both 1, we get a value out as 1. Same for these, the small collection here. And we're back to the same thing where they're both not 1, so we get 0 again. And this value then in decimal is 60, as I said before. So our next case is going to be. The OR operator, represented by this line. 
And if we take these two, three variables, some bits and more bits, we oil them together, we get 256. And that's because they have to be different values or one. So zero and zero is zero because they are not the same. One and one is fine, it gets one. Zero one is fine in this case, it's one again. So zero one again is another one. Two ones is one and zero one is one as well. So it's either one or one and zero or zero and one is the case, give you a value below. And that represents 254. So our next example is going to be the exclusive OR operator represented by this hat or upward arrow. And what we're going to do here is, so two ones in this case does not make a value as it did before in the OR operator. You have to have two different values to make a one below. So zero and one is a case and one and zero is the other case. Everything else is going to be zero. So we've got one here. These are all zero because they're different. And we have two different values here, one and zero here. So that makes one. And total value for that is 17. I just say that zeros obviously don't count as you can see. Okay, so our next example is going to be shifting. And shifting is basically just moving the bits across left or right. So if we're shifting eight across by one value, we get four. And you can see here below, I've printed it out. So if you move it across by one, we're moving it into the column, the third value in, because we're going right one. So you move from here one. And if you go to the top, you can see that that represents four, as it does as printed out below, four. And if you move it across two times, so eight, so go one, two, then that is in fact two. You're just moving the values along the amount of times you say here on the right hand side. And the same for shifting left, represented by these two left arrows. We are doing the same thing, but we're just going the other way. So in this case, we have one here and we're moving it across to the one up to the left. That's one, two, three, four, five values in. One, two, three, four, five. And that's 16 is the value we'll get for that. So these are all fairly easy examples because they are just one bit moving up and down. But we have an example here with 25, which is represented by this value here. We shift it left two times. We just pad in zeros at the right hand side and move everything across the amount of times we say. So in this case, the two ones here move across two to this side, this place here, and everything else is added on as zeros at the end. We print that out, we get 100, and 30 is moved across to the right five times, and everything is just pushed off the end, and we get zeros left behind. So we get zero. Okay, so as a concrete example, then we're going to use it to figure out the unique color components for a hexadecimal value. So you probably use that quite a lot for colors in your designs and things. But we're going to try and pull out the red, green, and blue components from a hexadecimal color value. So we have pink defined above here using the Swift uh, notation for hex. And we're going to try and step through this and see if we can make it clear for you. Um, first of all, we have pink here, which represents in binary as this. It's a 32 bit value, so we have a lot more digits to worry about here, but it's the same principle as the 8 bit. So we're going to add, as you can see here, we're adding pink on the value FF0000. Then we're going to shift it across 16 places. So as we know from before, if we add these together, then the two values need to be in place. So everything here is, there's nothing, there's no, um, bits are the same and we've got two here and two here which are two ones so we get the one 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 and zero zero one one that's in blue and what that represents then is 
CC0000, which is just the first part of the color representation of pink. And then what we do is we shift it across just to get the shorthand version of it, or just the end of it, so else we need to print out later on. And so we shift it across 16 places. So you just move this across 16 places, which comes out as this here value. So we print this out. We can see that we get the red component is 204, the green component is 102, and the blue component is 153. Because we're pulling out the first value by anding this, the middle value by anding the middle, and the end value by just anding the end. We don't need to shift that because it is at the end already. And that's quite a handy function just for working out that value. So that has been a quick overview of the bitwise operator. First of all, we talked about when and why to use it. Then we went through a concrete example of cutting out the color representation of a hexadecimal value.